Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool and we're back with another AC video today. This time we're working on a 2002 uh, Jeep Liberty uh, two-wheel drive, I believe. Uh, with what we're doing, it won't really make much of a difference if it's two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. But we are going to be replacing a condenser today. It's actually a pretty easy process. Uh, the service manual calls out that you need to remove the radiator. However, you don't need to remove the radiator to do this job. And we're going to walk through the steps of exactly how you do this. Uh, so first thing we're going to cover is what tools you need to do this. So let's step over here and take a look at the tools I have set out for this job. Okay, so got a ratcheting screwdriver with a Torx 20 tip, uh, a couple of flathead screwdrivers because you really never know when you're going to need them, uh, a flashlight that is also a UV light, um, long needle nose, regular pair of pliers, a uh, three inch extension, oh, didn't have it in film there. A uh, ratchet, 3 8 ratchet, a uh, socket set, and I think 10 is going to be the only 3 8 socket that I'm using. And then I have a uh, extension with a 13 wobble and a quarter inch drive ratchet. Um, this ratchet, you can do what I'm going to be doing with this with a wrench, but it's just a lot easier to have something like this. So uh, when we get to that point, I'll show you and talk about how you could do it with a wrench just take a little bit more time so let's look at the vehicle and see what we're going to be replacing okay so here is the condenser on the front this um, sorry this piece right here this is the condenser comes over to this side and down here we can see where it's got its leak at it's uh, you can see the oil where it's leaked out from the uh, from the condenser leaking and what we're going to have to do is let me zoom out here we're going to have to pull this front grill off and then this upper support will come off we'll pull the the latch assembly out and then we'll be able to disconnect the condenser and then remove it and pull it straight up and out and we'll talk about how we're going to do that and walk through it step by step Okay, our first step is going to be to remove this front grill piece, and uh, that's very simple to do, and we're going to use our uh, Torx 20. You can use a Torx 20 on a socket or a, stand, a regular driver with a Torx 20. This just happens to be a Torx 20 bit and a uh, ratcheting screwdriver. So the screws that are right here, 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 and here, we're going to pull those out. wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, now with those out, this grill is going to tilt forward at the top, and that'll let the bottom kind of unlatch from where it's at, and then a little pull out, and your grill assembly is off. Set it off to the side. Be careful not to scratch the paint. Next, we're going to be pulling off this assembly, and there are screws, uh, bolts, I'll show you here. Uh, I'll pull the camera off the tripod and show you, but there's one here, 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 this one here, and there's two down here. So let's pull the camera off the tripod and look. Okay, right here, 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 and the two down here. Those are the seven bolts that we're going to have to take out to get this assembly off. Um, and then in addition to that, there's two nuts, one right here and one right here. I'll walk through that here in just a second on what we're going to do to pull this latch assembly out. Okay, you'll remember that I said the areas where I'm going to use that extension and uh, wobble socket, um, you could use a wrench and that's one of them is right here and the other is right here. Um, it just makes it easier to pull it off with a wobble 
socket and the extension you could get a wrench in there and a little bit at a time and then spin it off by hand it would just take a little bit longer so for those of you who have to do that then I mean you're just gonna have to do that it's not that big of a deal but uh, just to save a little time I'm going to use this extension that I can set right down in here and get on it um, and then just break it and turn it loose and then I can do the same on this side and for those of you wondering that is a well I'll try to show you if it'll let me a 13 and the other screws that pull this assembly off the these and the other ones I showed you uh, they're 10 millimeter head bolts so uh, let me spin this off and we'll get moving two nuts get your mind out of the gutter okay now uh, we'll have to pull this off first Trying to make sure I'm not bumping the camera here. And then we'll be able to pull this latch out, and I'll show you how to do that here in one second. Okay, we're going to pull out on this just a, uh, a little bit. And we just need to clear this um, over those studs. That's one. And that's two. Okay. So now, let me check and see if you can see this in the shot. Okay. This is possibly the difficult part. Uh, and I'm going to try to make sure I keep this in. This, oops. This right here is the lever that the hood release cable goes onto. And we're just going to pull it back a little bit so that we can pull this hood release cable out. That's all. We're going to just grab it and tilt it back a little. See, it pulls real easily. We're just using pliers because they're easier to grip onto it with. But we're going to grab it. hands sorted here okay and once we've grabbed it use a needle nose pliers to just grab that cable push it down out of the hook on the bottom Ooh, had it and then that cable is free it's real simple to do once you, you see it up close and then this cable is going to disconnect right here um, okay and then all you've got to do is reach back here and pop that loose and out. And then you've got your cable here and slide it out of the hole that it comes through. And then it's free and clear and we can move on with pulling the rest of this. Okay, so the bolts I showed you, I'm just going to run through and pull them out real quick. I'll probably speed through it. Okay, so now we can grab this piece right here. This is going to be your biggest obstacle. This piece is free and ready to come out. So grab up here and just get that clear of that lip and then show you what I forgot. Right here. This is riveted onto this piece. So you have to kind of get the edge of it as you pull it up and it'll work around 
and come off of that uh, off of that uh, washer tank right there. And this piece right here, it's just got two little tabs that you push in on the side down here. That's one. And that's two. It's just those little tabs on either side. And it comes right up and out. Now we should be able to take that out. Let's move back and take a look. Okay, so like I said now, we'll just pull this back a little more and clear that uh, second ridge. Ooh, there we go. Got that side free. And there. Now that piece is free and clear. We can just set it right back here. Make sure you don't hit anything too horribly important. This may stick, may not. Now, we'll pull the two nuts that hold these lines in off of the right off the condenser here. And this bolt and this bolt that hold the condenser in and the condenser is going to come straight up and out. So let's get to it. Right down here on the condenser is where we're going to get the first bolt out. Come at it right there and loosen it up, pull it out, and then we'll move over to the other side, pull that one out, I'll show you it. This one is over here on the left side and it is that bolt right there, Let's see if I can get it. It fell. I'll get it. Okay, this right here and right here, those are the uh, nuts. And like I said, you can squeeze a wrench back here and work it off a little bit at a time. Um, I'm not interested in doing that right now. So, just going to whoop, pull that off. And actually pull that hose up and back out of the way and get in here and pull that off. I actually just put on not too long ago. It's just a little funky because of the way the line is. And it's got to be, it's very picky about being at the perfect angle to come up and out. Okay. Got that one out. Now, with this line just a little bit out of the way, uh, you're kind of limited on how much you can move it. Uh, this condenser will come right up and out and let's back up and take a look okay so we've got our new one and what we're going to do is well one you want to read through any of the information that comes from it but in this case we want to add about uh, three quarters of an ounce of oil to this condenser before we go ahead and install it so what I've got is PAG 46 oil, and I'm going to add about three quarters of an ounce of oil to it, um, because each of the components in the AC system carries a little bit of oil, and when you replace one of those components, you also need to replace the oil that was in it, so that the system maintains the proper amount of oil in it. Uh, now I just have this marked off to roughly where one 
ounce is at. So I'm just going to add a little bit at a time and let it kind of soak itself down in and drip a little because apparently that's what I do. We'll have to go clean up that dye or that oil because it's got dye in it. We don't want to confuse ourselves or anyone else in the future. Dye on my gloves. Um, let me set this down one second and go wash my hands off and spray that off uh, so we don't leave it there. Okay, so we've got our about three quarters of an ounce of PAG oil in here uh, because that's what our R134A systems take is PAG oil. We're going to slide this down in place just like we took the old one out. One of the things to note on these AC systems, well, any AC system, when you're doing service is um, as soon as you possibly can, get the system cleaned back up or sealed back up. And then uh, let, me, let me shift you around so you're not just staring down there. One of the things uh, to remember with AC service, and I talked about it briefly in my last AC video, is as soon as you can, you want to get these connections back on and sealed back up so that you can put a vacuum pump on the system and be begin pulling a vacuum uh, on the system. Uh, because what that's going to do is it's going to pull any moisture that got into the system out. It's going to pull the pressure down so that when you charge it it's easy to just flow a bunch of refrigerant in and it helps pre prevent sorry prevent contamination from moisture being in the system that's one of the biggest things it does so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get these lines back on here and I'm gonna put a vacuum pump on it and I'm gonna kinda go quickly through the back together process for two reasons one just so you're not sitting here watching the exact same stuff you already did in reverse and two because uh, the vacuum pumps gonna be running and that thing is annoyingly loud and I'd hate for you guys to just sit and listen to it Wah! it just that's no fun so let me uh, get these connections on uh, I'll hook the vacuum pump up and then we'll just kind of run through the rest of the uh, assembly Let's get the vacuum pump on it. Okay, now we got the vacuum pump hooked up and ready to go. Uh, it's gonna get pretty loud from this point, so I'm probably gonna cut the audio on the video. And uh, you'll just watch me zip the rest of this back together while this vacuum pump runs. I will uh, meet up with you on the other side.
as you may have noticed my camera died right there as I was finishing up uh, putting the front grill on and everything but um, we got the vehicle obviously you saw it put back together um, I charged the system I was going to make a video on how to charge the uh, AC system with this one but the camera died and I had to get it back uh, fully together charged make sure everything was good so I'll do my best to get one here pretty quick I got a couple other possible AC jobs lined up within the next week or two uh, to get you guys a video on how to charge the AC system but that condenser job on this is actually pretty easy uh, not not anything to get too you know worried about if you got to do one you you can usually get it done yourself um, Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and thank you for being a part of what we're doing here on the channel. I'll see you with the next video.